comes first from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 10, starting with verse 12. And then we'll go to Acts, chapter 18, starting with verse 6. Before we read, let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this day and for your word. And we ask that this day you would plant your word deeply in our hearts. Help us to be bearers of your word and doers of it. In the name of Christ Jesus, we pray. Matthew 10, starting in verse 12, Jesus is speaking to his disciples. And he says, as you enter the home, give it your greeting. If the home is deserving, let your peace rest on it. If it is not, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, leave that home or town and shake the dust off your feet. And then from Acts 18, starting in verse 6. But when they opposed Paul and became abusive, he shook out his clothes in protest and said to them, Your blood be on your own heads. I'm innocent of it. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be unto God. It's unusual to tell a, a story about a bar from the pulpit, but it's the only one I could find, so <laughs> bear with me this morning. A uh, man went into a bar and crowd in there and he noticed in the crowd one cowboy wearing a cowboy hat and for some reason this man hated cowboys and he wanted to make it known and so he spoke up loud enough for everybody here and said I'm going to buy a round for everybody in here it's all me except for the cowboy he didn't get one the cowboy tipped his hat and said thank you and everybody cheered and everybody went their merry way but it made the man mad he thought maybe the cowboy didn't understand so after a few moments, he did it again. He said, I'll buy a round for everybody in here, except for the cowboy. I'm not buying one for him. And again, the cowboy tipped his hat and said, thank you. And everybody cheered, and they drank their drink. Well, this went on you know, several times during the night. The man kept trying to make his point, and every time the cowboy would take his hat and say thank you. And finally, toward the end, the man was out of money and was mad. And he asked the bartender, he said, is that cowboy crazy or stupid? And the bartender said, no. He said, he owns this place. Oh. <laughs> Every round he bought was money in his pocket. <laughs> the whole point of the story being that when you hold a grudge against people or somebody or, or hold something in your life that shouldn't be there, it usually comes back and bites you somehow. And uh, they don't have, there's a saying out there, I've seen several bumper stickers, and it's true that no good deed goes unpunished. I mean, when you try to do something good, it comes back and bites you. Uh, that's true sometimes. But it's certainly true that if you hold on to something that you shouldn't, uh, that it will come back and bite you. And in today's scripture, we see a way of dealing in two different examples with maybe sometimes people or situations uh, that kind of stick in our craw or that worry us or that bother us to no end that may ruin our day or ruin our week. And we can see it in uh, the gospel passage and in the passage about Paul. In the gospel passage, Jesus has just called his 12 disciples, those who will be his immediate circle of followers, and he sends them out on a mission by themselves. They're to go out, spread out into the community, and spread the gospel. They'll have power to work miracles and to heal people. Uh, and they're, it's such an urgent matter that they're not to take anything with them. They're not supposed to pack a suitcase to go. You know, if it were me or one of us probably, we'd probably take two weeks trying to figure out what we needed to take with us and pack a suitcase and go, but Jesus like, no, go now, it's an urgent matter. And uh, also they were to rely on God's care. And so when they, they weren't supposed to take any money or provisions with them, when they went to a village, they were to go to a house of some good folks in the village and present themselves. And then those folks would, by the rules of hospitality that day, should take them in and take care of them and make sure their needs are met, especially if they're known to be good people. That's what good people did. But Jesus says, if you reach people that do not take you in, in other words, that's a double rejection. That would be a really bad thing. Uh, or you go to a village that rejects what you're preaching and is abusive to you, uh, then just shake the dust off of your feet, shake the dust off of your shoes, and move on. And boy, they did have dust back then. They had no paint for any course. Everybody wore sandals. Even the soldiers had sandals. And, uh, you know, you got dust that covered you. So she had plenty of dust to shake off. We see something similar in what Paul is doing. Paul is preaching in the scripture. And it was his normal way of doing things to go to the synagogue first. And then also to preach to the Gentiles. But in this particular case, 
uh, the folks are very abusive to him. And he finally gets to the point of shaking his clothes, which is very similar to shaking the dust off your shoes. He shakes his clothes and says, in essence, I'm done with you. And uh, you know, as much as he loves his people and wishes for them to experience what he has experienced and still hopes to have a great mission among them, he's come to a point at this point of his mission in life saying, well, my mission is to the Gentiles now. I'm going to go to them. And so he shook the dust off of what he had been doing and moved on. And that's kind of what the shaking of dust off of your shoes or your clothes uh, means. You know, it means I'm done with this. I'm finished with this task and I'm moving on. I'm done beating my head against the wall. I'm going to go do something else. And in terms of spreading, uh, you know, the, the gospel, that would be a pretty stern thing uh, to make. But, you know, that's God's judgment and in God's hand. Uh, what's up to us is for us to move on, and if there's judgment to be made, God will make that judgment. Um, there comes a point sometimes in dealing with people and dealing with things in our lives that we may just have to shake the dust off and move on. The Bible is probably the most widely known ancient source that uses that phrase, to shake the dust off, you know. And that's where we get the phrase, shake it off or shake the dust off your feet or you know, shake the dust off your clothes is from the scripture. But the gesture itself was an ancient one. It was known even well before the scriptures. People would shake the dust off their shoes. Sometimes even they would just pick up a handful of dust and throw it to the wind, which was their way of saying, I'm done with this uselessness. I'm moving on to something else. And while this might have been an insult to somebody or even a warning to them, uh, you know, I'm done with you, kind of like Paul is saying here, uh, it was not the worst thing that could be done. You know, when you shook your shoes off and moved on to something else, it left the judgment to God. You know, nobody pulled a dagger and slew somebody else. Nobody pulled a club and beat somebody else into submission. Nobody got so mad and uh, wringing their hands over something, getting angry over it, that they had a stroke or a heart attack. Uh, people just moved on. And everybody lived to live and love again and to think about it and maybe gain some perspective. Maybe amends could be made later if it was a personal dispute, maybe not. But in the end, at least, it was not an irreversible outcome. And the shaking off of dust gave people time, much needed time in which to regain their composure, to rest from the struggle they may have been involved in, to take a breath and to kind of let things come back into focus again, whether it be relationship with someone else or whether it be something else we're dealing with. Sometimes when we're so involved in the struggle, we can't, we lose sight of the truth of the matter, and our vision gets kind of warped about it. That's, uh, you know, my brother is, is a psychiatrist, and he has told me more than once that, you know, even psychiatrists need psychiatrists because, you know, you're so involved in your own struggles, you sometimes can't see uh, what else is going on. You have to have somebody else on the outside look at it and say, okay, here's what's going on. You, know, you lose focus of things when you're so involved in them. And so, too, it may be the same with us. Uh, we maybe need to, as it says, let go and let God. And of course, we should always let God. That's what we're about, is having God involved in our lives and us being involved in God's mission. And God certainly blesses us by allowing us to take part in his work. And sometimes it's hard to do that work. But then sometimes we may need to remember that God may not need us or want us on a particular project. It may well be that we're a hindrance to a situation rather than being a help to it. And so in those situations, we might just need to take a step back. You know, and shake the dust off our clothes and be done with it, at least for a time. And then maybe, uh, you know, in time, uh, things will be answered. You know, there may be an answer to the prayer. Uh, things may resolve themselves. Another door may be opened or we may come to the conclusion that that wasn't our struggle to start with. Another way of looking at that shaking of the dust off or shaking dust off of something is that in ancient times, the bulk of the Jewish people didn't live in the Holy Land. They lived in the diaspora, as they called it, or as they called it in their own language, Hebrew, they called it the Galut. And to this day, that's what they call it. If you live outside of Israel, you live in the Galut. You're a Galutnik. And that uh, basically means you live in the Gentile land. And that's where the bulk of Jews lived, they didn't live. Uh, and so often when people would come back to Israel, either you know, for a pilgrimage on a high holy day, or maybe to move back there, <coughs> at the borders of the Holy Land, they would stop 
and shake the dust off of their shoes before they went into the Holy Land. And in doing so, what they were doing was that it was their way of showing their coming home and that they're getting rid of all the ways and things they had to adopt while living in Gentile lands. And now they were coming home back to the ways of God, making a clean break with their past and starting anew. And so shaking off the dust doesn't necessarily have to have a negative connotation at all. It can be a good thing. We need to ask ourselves, you know, are there situations in our lives that we need to make a clean break from? You know, have we been living in ways that are unhealthy for us or maybe for others? Have we been beating our heads repeatedly against the wall and wondering where God is and why God doesn't remove the wall or when he's going to do it? Um, you know, there comes a time when we just need to shake it off. Shaking things off doesn't mean that you're surrendering. You know, we humans, we hate to give up. We like to be the, the inspirational story of the little engine that could. You know, I just keep on trying to get up there. And sometimes you do that. Sometimes you have to do that. You know, you just don't give up on everything. I'm not saying that. But sometimes, you know, you have to just shake it off. Because sometimes to do the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result this time around, uh, that's a sign of being crazy. You know, you keep beating your head against the wall and saying, this hurts. Well, quit beating your head against the wall. And quit hurting. Kind of like the old hee haw joke, you know, where the guy would say, Doc, it hurts when I do this. And the doc would say, well, don't do that. You know, it's kind of the same thing with us. You know, sometimes we keep doing the same old thing and we keep getting the same old results. And then we wonder why. Well, because we keep doing the same thing. Sometimes the only victory to be found is really even letting go of it. And yes, there are times when we need to, to keep on keeping on. There are times when we need to keep striving. We need to keep struggling. There are some things we never let go of, of course. Things that we'll always fight and defend. But that's not always the case. I know in my own life, and you can probably think in some of yours as well, that many's the time when we've been caught up in a struggle and we have fought and pushed and pulled and prayed and worried and sweated blood, only to find in the end that in the end we just have to give it up. And when we do, we sometimes find out that in the distance and perspective we're given from taking a step back, that what we were struggling about maybe really wasn't all that important to start with. Or maybe what we were struggling about resolved itself without us having to do anything about it. Or as more likely the case as it is with me, what we worried about kind of goes on its merry way without me having to worry about it. Uh, my worrying about it didn't affect it one way or another. It just kept on keeping on. And so we have to sometimes stop and think, do I need to shrug this off or keep on with it? You know, only we, of course, know what struggles we're going through in our life, what our hearts are holding on to. Uh, and sometimes we don't know what to do with it, but God does. And I think that's where we pray to God to show us clearly what should we do. Is this something I hang on to? Is this something I keep on pushing with? Or is this something I let go of? And I believe God will gladly show us. He'll open doors that need to be open, and He'll shut doors that need to be shut. And again, we're at the beginning of a year, and it's a good time for us to stop and, you know, kind of take a look at our lives and to have a healthy spiritual life. And maybe in that other way of looking at shaking things off, it's time to come home. And, you know, kind of focus on God once again, like the old Israelites used to do. Shake off the dust of our past ways of doing things and turn to God in God's ways once again. So let go, let God, and let God's peace reign in our hearts and lives. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that you do allow us to take part in your work in this world. And sometimes that work can be hard, and we are to keep on knowing that in faith and time, even in our struggles, you will make what it is that you wish to come to pass, come to pass. But there are other times when we struggle and, and worry with things that we really shouldn't. Lord, help us to have the wisdom to know the difference between those things and the strength to do whichever we need to do, whether it be to hang on and keep on fighting or whether just to let it go. Lord, we ask that you would help us to shrug off those things we need to so we might focus more clearly on you and might have more of your peace in our hearts. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.